Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking all about angle relationships. So I have six very special angle, angle relationships that I need to show you today. Um, make sure that as I'm showing you each one, you're really noticing the difference between each one so that we kind of don't get them mixed up. The faster we have this terminology down with the diagram, we really understand what each one really means, the faster you're gonna be able to move on um, for everything else that we need to be able to do in geometry because all of these angle relationships are going to play huge, huge parts when we get into geometric proofs. So let's take a look. Um, the first one that we need to understand is adjacent angles. Now the word adjacent means next to. So I always think about when you're in a classroom and you think about the classroom that's right next to your classroom, like you share a wall. That's an adjacent classroom. Um, if your room is right next to a sibling's room, those rooms are adjacent to each other because they share a wall. Well, adjacent angles are the same thing. They are two angles that share a common ray or a common side. So the, this angle and this angle here have this common ray. It's like the wall that they both share. They have a separate ray here, but this red angle contains this, um, uses this purple ray, and this blue angle also contains that purple ray. So the same thing here. These two angles would be adjacent to each other because they're sharing that same angle, okay? So if I give you a little bit more definition about adjacent angles, here is what a diagram looks like. So I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so we can solely focus on this one part. So here are adjacent angles. Here are some facts I would be able to say about them. Angle one and angle two, remember we can name angles based on a number. Angle one and angle two share a common vertex, B. Okay, so common ang uh, adjacent angles have a common ray with that common vertex. Angle one and angle two share a common side, which is ray BC. And we can say that they have no common interior points. So think about that. If I was to plot a point here and a point here, this point is only within the interior of angle one. This point is only within the interior angle of two. If I was to place a point here, it's not in the interior of either angle. It's on the line or ray BC. So it's not in either. You can't have a point that is in both of those. They're completely separate angles from each other. The next one I want to go through is a vertical angle. I'm just going to zoom my screen in a little bit bigger. Okay, so a vertical angle you can see is created by two intersecting lines and they have really special properties. So this angle here is vertical to this angle. Now we're so used to hearing the word vertical and we think this because that's what vertical means. This is vertical, this is horizontal, but vertical angles are angles that are created directly opposite each other. Okay, so this angle here on the left is vertical to this angle here on the right. And the same thing would go here. These are a pair of vertical angles, and then these are a pair of vertical angles. So they are directly across from each other. And here are some important facts. First fact in this diagram here is that we've got two pairs of vertical angles, just like in my other diagram. One and three are vertical angles, and angle two and angle four are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent to each other, which should make sense also kind of visually. They are completely congruent to each other. So angle one is congruent to angle three, angle two is congruent to angle four. And if they're congruent to each other, we also already know that their measures are then equal. They're not adjacent and they're formed by lines that intersect. So when you look at angle two and angle four, we should see that they do share a common vertex, but they're definitely not adjacent because adjacent would mean that they share a common side. So angle two and angle four do not share a common side. They are vertical to each other. They're not adjacent. And so we're angle one and angle three. Perpendicular. Now perpendicular has been in your math vocabulary since at least third grade, maybe even earlier. And we should remember that perpendicular angles look like a perfect T or a perfect cross. And we should know right away what kind of angles are formed. Okay, so this would be a pair of perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines intersect to form four right angles. 
And we know that this little square in the corner means a right angle. But now think about it. If they're intersecting, this is a right angle, but the vertical angle to it is congruent, so it's also a right angle. And then what ends up happening here is that all of them are right angles, because if this is a straight line, and we know there's 180 degrees in a straight line, if one of the angles is 90, then the other angle is 90, and so on. So the moment you have one right angle, you have four right angles, and that's what perpendicular lines create. They are all congruent adjacent angles. So congruent means that they all are the same shape, so they're all right angles, and that they're adjacent. So angle one is adjacent to angle two, angle two is adjacent to angle three, angle three is adjacent to angle four, and so on. This is the notation for perpendicular. We would say that line AC, so remember the notation, you would put a line symbol above it, arrows at both ends. If you don't have the arrows, it's a line segment, totally different. And this upside down capital letter T is the symbol we use for perpendicular. So I would be able to say that line AC is perpendicular to line BD. Okay, and that would be the notation that we would use. Okay, next set of specific angles. So complementary angles. Complementary angles. And we're going to see that we have two different cases of what complementary angles might look like, but they share the exact same definition. So here's a set of complementary angles. Complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Now, you could have a right angle that's split up into two angles. Um, they could be, you know, just like this, and those would obviously be complementary because if you took a right angle and you cut it up, then the two angles that are there would add up to 90. Or they could be completely separate from each other. So you could have angle one and angle two, non-adjacent, not intersecting, not touching each other on completely different parts of the diagram, but as long as their measures add up to 90, then they are complementary. It can be shown in a right angle, like I mentioned, or they can be in two separate angles. So really, really big, you know, important fact to know that, that you can say it's complementary if it's within a right angle, or if they add up to 90. That's really um, the biggest rule, just adding up to 190. So then supplementary. Supplementary angles are similar, but they have a different measure that they add up to, and you can see these two angles are actually creating an entire straight line. So for supplementary, you could have your angles look like this, angle 3 and 4, or they could be completely separate. They are two angles whose sum is 180. So these add up to 180 because they are on a straight line, and a straight line has 180 degrees. Or if you found two angles whose sum just simply adds up to 180, they are supplementary angles. They can share a line, or they could be two separate angles. So the same thing with complementary. They could be together, they could be separate. The real part of the definition is just about what the sum of the angles is. The last special um, angle relationship we need to know is a linear pair of angles. So a linear pair, think about linear. Linear means a line. So a linear pair would mean two angles that create a straight line, which we just saw in supplementary, but also in supplementary angles, we saw that it um, you know, could be separate. But that's not the case for a linear pair. They're adjacent angles, so angle five and angle six, they're adjacent. You can see they share this common side with non-common sides. So these two sides here, this ray and this ray, are obviously not in common. The non-common sides are opposite rays. And we talked about that in a previous lesson, that if you have opposite rays, that means that this ray and this ray are directly opposite each other, which means it makes a perfect straight line, which then if you have a perfect straight line, it's 180 degrees. And just by definition then, if it's making a straight line and it adds up to 180, any linear pair is also then supplementary. Okay, so I have this diagram here for you, and it looks a little complicated. Um, I'm going to zoom out just so we can see the full set of problems here. But I've got a few things going on. I can see I have some intersecting lines. I have some angle measures here, just a couple labeled. This is 50 degrees here, angle B, D, C. I can see I have angle D, F, H, labeled as 130. I see you have a right angle there, and so we should remember then that what that means about the other angles around it. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. 
So hopefully you can you can read this. It's a little light on my screen, but that's okay. All right, first thing, two acute vertical angles. So acute means less than 90, vertical angles. So angles that we know are directly across from each other. So if I had to pick out a pair of two acute vertical angles, and you can always pause guys before I reveal, would be angle CDB. So here's an acute angle, CDB. And the vertical angle to this angle would be angle J, D, F. So that's a pair of acute vertical angles. Okay, that would be an example. Next one, a linear pair with angle B, D, F. So here's B, D, F. This angle here, B, D, F. Now a linear pair with this angle, this is actually kind of interesting, take a look. If I'm looking at B, D, F. Well, this blue angle here that I marked up, if you look at those side by side, we can agree that those make a, um, a, a straight line. And also look at this angle here, BDC, that we labeled before with the red angle. That also actually makes a straight line. So any of either one of those would be totally fine. Now, when I listed this example here, notice I listed it as FDJ, FDJ. But angle FDJ, we should see, is really the same thing as angle JDF. Two adjacent angles to DFE. Now I'm going to clean up my screen here just a little bit so I can focus on this one problem. DFE. So this angle here. It says two adjacent angles. So adjacent angles means they have to share the same side. So if I was looking at this and I wanted to find something adjacent to this angle, I could say angle EFG. So this angle is definitely adjacent because they share this common side. My other option would be angle DFH, DFH, this angle here. And not only do those um, are those adjacent, but also we should notice that they actually are also making a linear pair. Okay, next one, an angle supplementary to KCD. An angle that's supplementary to KCD, so this angle here. Now, supplementary, I don't know what the angle measure is here, so I can't just say, hey, um, you know, I know it's 140 degrees. Let me find a 40-degree angle. I don't know. But I do know if it's supplementary, then that's also a possibility to create a linear pair. So angles that would create a linear pair with this angle would be angle KCL and angle DCB. Those angles with that blue angle would definitely make it, and so I listed one of them. Last one, if the measure of angle ABE, okay, if the measure of angle ABE, and notice what ABE is, guys, ABE is a right angle, and it's equal to 3x plus 6, find x. So I think we would probably know what to do there. If it's a right angle and we know it's also equal to 3x plus 6, that would simply mean we are setting 3x plus 6 equal to 90, subtract 6 on both sides, Solve for x, and we get x equals 27. Okay, if the measure of KCL is 5x plus 10 and the measure of LCB is 4x minus 10, find x. So let's see what we're talking about here. KCL, so I'm just going to clean this up. So let's see what relationship this has. KCL is this first value. 5x plus 10, and LCB. And we're given another value. So what can we tell about these two angles? These two angles should add up to 180. I hope you said that. So I would be able to say 5x plus 10 plus 4x minus 10 is equal to 180 because when I looked on the diagram, I saw that they were a linear pair, and a linear pair is supplementary. And if I was to do my solving, we should be able to get that x is equal to 20. Last problem for us. Two angles are supplementary, so we know that that means they add up to 180. One angle is 32 degrees less than the other. Find the angles. Okay, so one angle we can call x. The other angle is 32 degrees less than it. So x minus 32 would be my second angle. So x the first angle, 
plus x minus 32, that would represent the second angle, equals 180. This is how you would set that up. So then I end up with 2x equals 212 when I add my 32, and I end up getting 108. Okay, so I'm sorry, 106. So if 106 is one angle, well, 106 um, minus 32, that would give me my second angle of 74. It should work out because 106 plus 74 would add up to 180. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.